Uh, yeah. I really love that song. That was one of my favorite songs and my favorite courses from F-Zero GX. My favorite installment of all time. Uh, I really love that song. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of F-Zero Ending It All. Last time, Tinsel Steelist had just got the mystery from Bert and Clank that the mobile task force has been missing. And she just got the schedule for the next race, which is scheduled to be in Tortoise 3, at Green Plant, which is one of her personal favorite tracks in the galaxy. So, without further ado, let's get this started. Alright. Welcome back to another chapter, although this one may be the latest for some time as I still need to put some scenarios together. Tinsel continues to look for the task force while she competes in an F-Zero race in Green Plants. Will she be successful in both ends? Well, let's find out, shall we? Lap 2. On one side of Tortoise 3, the portion that is really hit by vicious windstorms, was a world inhabited by humans and numerous fertile plants, emitting oxygen to sustain life. It was a secondary planet for the immense human population, and so, biotechnologists created this, these plants to create an automated oxygen-generated facility, hence the name. The course itself had an enormous pipe intersecting the course. There were also some cylinders to make the course a challenge for amateur racers. At precisely 10 o'clock, the stands were filled with millions of fans of all life forms throughout the universe. The announcer spoke. Welcome to an astonishing race here at Green Plant. And now, here come the contestants. He described each one, including Biorexes, Tinsels, and Octoman's machines. The Deep Claw, a narrow red machine, was piloted by a red octopus from the planet Takora. Octoman was one of Zoda's henchmen working for Black Shadow. Another car also was used by the second one of Zoda's thugs, the Big Fang, Biorex's vehicle, looks like a green tank with thick, sharp fangs sticking out of its exterior. Biorex was a genetically engineered dinosaur with a ravenous and aggressive personality. It was ideal for Zoda to pick such a reckless enemy. The two cars were located in the front while Tinsel was in the back along with a machine that almost resembled between a green-yellow shark and a torpedo with three dorsal fins. Heh, <laughs> now I get the wh why they had the Pokemon name Sharpedo. The machines hovered and the gates lowered. Three, two, one, go! The race was on. Well, unfortunately, I didn't have a lot of ideas, so I just skipped to the final lap. My bad. During the final lap, she saw the big fang and the deep claw as she caught up. She realized them as Black Shadow's minions, and she won't let them win this race and take the prize money for his benefits. As he saw her, Biorex snorted. <sighs> That's Tinsel Steelus, the only surviving member of our enemies. What do you say we tick her off? <laughs> ah, yes, a great idea, Octoman responded. I'll distract her while you ram her out of her misery. She must be under a lot since she lost her friends. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll see about that. They boxed her in, but she slowed down and swiped Octoman clear off the track. Biorex was more ferocious. You'll never win, Tinsel. I'll go munch on some mammoth ribs. Although I wouldn't because they're so fattening. Why you? He kept knocking the silver comet against the guardrails to lower its energy. In fact, her energy was so low that the alarm started to go off. Which is the same one from GX. Sparks flew as she was getting squished by the heavy tank. Off in the distance, the torpedo-like machine showed up. It was the hyperspeeder. The pilot was dressed up in a green dinosaur suit. So this is Biorex, huh? 
I could have found you, he muttered. He raced ahead and saw him and Tinsel taking a fight to the death. The comet couldn't take any more abuse, and smoke was rising from its exterior. Just when it seemed all hope was lost, the speeder zoomed toward the big fang and hammered it from the side. Biorex tried to hit it back, but it was too slick. It was very agile, and it repeatedly hit the big fang when it was vulnerable after an attack. With a swift spin, the vehicle flipped, crashed into the guardrail, and exploded on impact. Tinsel crossed the finish line first, then the mysterious pilot in the hyperspeeder. The crowd roared as they stood up from the stands. A spectacular victory for Tinsel Steelers! This crowd is going wild for this newcomer! After they made the ver their victory lap, Tinsel and the dinosaur-suited pilot jumped out of their vehicles and shook hands. Great race, newcomer, he said. Thanks. You didn't do so bad yourself. I did appreciate how you hammered Biorex. I was almost at my last legs. Thanks for your help. He turned bashful. Ah, it's all right. My, na my real name is Christopher Annex, but you can call me Beastman. Nice to meet you. I'm Tinsel. Tinsel Steelis. I admire your machine, Tinsel. Well, I should be going and capture that ugly carnival before he starts any more trouble. Yeah, thanks again. See you later. He waved and walked away. But before he was out of her sight, she told him, Wait, wait! Will I see you in the next race? That all depends. I could be... As long as there isn't any more fierce animals for me to catch. He saluted and he was off leaving Tinsel their first, first place win and the prize money with her trophy. At the dark room, Octoman was sobbing. He wiped his yellow eyes with one of his red tentacles and his tears were made of ink. Oh, that stings. What is Black Shadow gonna say to me now? Octoman? He stood up, startled. <gasps> And through, the and through the glare, he saw Tinsel walking over to him. Please, please, don't hurt me. I surrender. I'm not here to harm you. Just calm down and tell me. What are you crying for? That was a first since she saw one of her enemies in tears. However, Octoman wasn't her enemy to begin with. Black Shadow's gonna kill me because I lost the race. He's been more brutal than he's ever been when the task force disappeared. Miss Killer will do the same since she is his right-hand man or woman. More tears flowed and he covered them with one of his arms. No, it's not like that. It doesn't have to be that way. Why did you work for Black Shadow anyway? You weren't always like this. The Federation just couldn't get enough of me and my people. We were always being hunted down by them, and we were surrounded by many enemies. Our economy is also failing, so I was recruited by Black Shadow to get my vengeance. That'll show him not to mess with me. It's only just to keep my credentials at bay, that's all. You don't have to do this. I'll make sure you are protected. I mean. You do remember last year when I gave the money to you so that your planet can prosper and that you can save your children? Well, I did it all for you. You're not truly my enemy. She put her hands on his face and how slippery it felt, like a fish out of water. Her voice softened as she looked into his eyes. I can see you. You're just you. Don't make it much harder for yourself and for your people back in Takora. Go back to your world, and do what you have to do there. Unless if you want to help me search for the task force- No! I won't let you. I'm sorry. I can't do that. I won't let them catch me and treat me like I'm a traitor to my family. I thank you for your help. But I need to hide myself for a while. I understand. Just remember what I told you. Thanks, Sensel. 
He walked away, sliding his tentacles with his head bowed and his arms drooped at his sides. Tinsel made a promise to help change Octomian's reputation when everything was over. Back at home, Tinsel changed into a race car PJs and tucked herself in. She looked at Rick's picture with his girlfriend. She took it from his room when she was looking for him. They looked so nice together, and then she made an amazing discovery. That girl looks exactly like Miss Killer! Could it be that she was brainwashed by Black Shadow? Only one way to be sure. If she finds the task force, she'll find Black Shadow. And what about the syringe she found? Well, I guess I'll make an appointment with Rodney and find out. <sighs> she had a restless night's sleep, dreamless sleep. Rodney Stewart had just got his doctorate, and his facility was close to the old course Tinsel was training at. Earlier, she talked to him on the phone, and he scheduled an appointment for tomorrow at 11 a.m. She was right on time, and she met the receptionist. She said hello when she was expecting an appointment for her. Dr. Rodney will be there shortly. Please take a seat. After 15 minutes, he came out and called for Tinsel. He was wearing a long white robe, and his hair was the same color as his dad's, only much shorter. She walked over to his room, and she discussed about the tube and the syringe. I was looking for your dad back at the task force's headquarters, but he wasn't there. When I tried to find him in his lab, I found a note. She took it out of her right pocket. She unraveled it, saying, Since we'll use this tool when you need it. I had no idea what it was used for. I was hoping you would figure it out. All right. I'll take the tube and the syringe to the lab and find out what's inside it. Whatever it is, I'm sure it's very useful. <laughs> My dad never goes wrong when it comes to chemicals. Thanks, Doc. She handed him the tools and he was off, leaving Tinsel waiting and wondering what they might be. The fluid must be very potent, whatever it may be used for. Why would Dr. Stewart give me a note to use it? He must have prepared all this in a hurry, no doubt. After 20 minutes, Rodney came back and asked Tinsel to go with him in the lab. Inside was a lot of test tubes, burners, chemicals, and pills. They were stored neatly on the shelves in perfect order. Some of the test tubes had fluids bubbling inside. And a few robots were assisting Rodney with handling the strong chemicals properly. With goggles and plastic gloves, the duo went to the place where the tube and the syringe were laid, next to a microscope. Its lens can go up to a, a thousand times to see what's inside the fluid. He looked closely through them and saw a bunch of different cells floating inside the fluid on the small clear swab. He observed, This solution is very interesting. My father must have, been, must have had a good reason on giving it to you. What's up, Doc? It seems that this is some kind of an enhanced developer of the brain. If I'm correct, it could be used as a mind-controlling agent. Of course, it's not used for mind control, but rather to reverse the effects of it, restoring the brain to its normal functions. Wow! That's amazing! Is there anyone you know that may be brainwashed or something? I'm not sure, but I fear for the worst for the task force. Maybe they could be hypnotized by Black Shadow because they haven't returned for quite some time. Or... Maybe it's used for that girl Rick knows. He said that she resembles a girl named Taruka, and he thinks that that's her working for Zoda and the others. That may be. If you are right, I suggest you hold on to it. Like I said, my dad must have had a motive on placing his responsibility in your hands. Thanks, Doc. I'll let you know if anything comes up. Tell my father I said hi. I will, and I will do my best to keep it safe. I'm counting on you, and so is my dad. He thumbed up, and she left the hospital with pride. Sorry I didn't bold this. I'll get to work on it eventually. I know that this story is pretty much leaning toward GX and more than GP Legend, but GX is my favorite game in the series and one of my favorite courses is Green Plant. And according to the profile, Optiman does want money to restore his planet and the Milky Way Federation does always give him 
and is kind a hard time. That's why Tinsel sees the good in him and she wants him to use it rather than work for Black Shadow. If you look at Robert Stewart's profiles, he doesn't have a son. Rodney is an original character inspired by the singer Rob Stewart, although his real name is Roderick. I know it's kind of weird, but... Hey, Tinsel needs someone to talk to now that Dr. Stewart has gone away. If I get some more scenarios together, I'll come up with more chapters, so keep a sharp eye for it. Hopefully, if I'll have more time, I'll make more videos. Alright guys, that's it for now. Lap 2 is finally done. So, next time, we'll find out what that formula is truly used for, as well as continuing Tinsel's quest on reuniting the task force. So until then, this is the Ekron Writer, signing out. Ciao everybody.